Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at hypothesis testing so we can answer questions from exercise 7a. Now in this video what we're going to be looking at is just the definitions and the notation on hypothesis testing and what is a hypothesis test. So uh, this chapter is all going to be about testing statistically whether a statement is true or not. Um, so several definitions we need to know here. A population parameter uh, is, a is a statistical measure relating to the population. Uh, for example, the mean of the population parameter. Um, a hypothesis is uh, a statement made about a population parameter. The null hypothesis is the default position with which we usually take an in our initial assumption to be true. So, for example, uh, if you're rolling a dice and you want to work out the probability of getting a 6, then your null hypothesis is that the probability is one-sixth. The alternative hypothesis, maybe the bias might be diced, is, uh, tells us about the parameter or the situation if our null hypothesis turns out to be incorrect. So if we think the, bias, the, di the dice is biased, then we say that the probability is not equal to a sixth. Uh, if it's biased towards a sixth, then it would be greater than a sixth. If it's biased against a sixth, then the probability would be less than one sixth. Okay, and the test statistic is the observation that we have seen that we're going to test to see if that is statistically um, possible to happen. Okay, so if we've tossed four coins, um, if we toss a coin four times and three heads, then that is our test statistic. That's our observation that we've seen from our given situation um, that we're going to test to see if that is statistically possible to happen. So let's think about a given situation here. Imagine we're do rolling a dice and we're recording the number of sixes. We roll our dice 20 times and we get a six appear eight times. Now eight is quite a lot of times to appear um, rough for rolling a six. Um, we'd expect maybe two, three, maybe four, uh, but eight times is quite a lot. So we're going to see if um, this is statistically possible. Um, obviously, it could be way less than two or three or four, it could be higher than two, three or four, but how likely is it that it was eight times or more? Um, yeah, so that's our test statistic there. So our test statistic is the proportion of the number of sixes rolled out of 20. Our null hypothesis will be that the, the dice is um, not biased, or it's fair dice. And our alternative hypothesis is that the dice is biased towards uh, rolling a six, so therefore the probability is more than one sixth. Okay, so let's have a look at another situation here. John wants to see whether a coin is unbiased or whether it is biased towards coming down on heads. He tosses the coin eight times and counts the number of times x that it lands heads up. Describe the test statistic, the null hypothesis, and the suitable alternative hypothesis. The test statistic here will be the number or the proportion of heads that come out after eight tosses. The null hypothesis will be a fair coin. And the alternative hypothesis will be towards heads, so the probability will be greater than a half. Uh, if it just said that it's a biased coin and we didn't know, then we would just have to write that the probability is not equal to a half. But in this case here, it does say comes down on heads, um, bias towards coming down on heads, so therefore the probability is greater than a half. Let's have one more look at an example here. Uh, an election candidate believes that she has the support of 40% of the residents in a particular town. A research wants to test to the 5% significance level, I'll describe what that means in a second, whether the candidate overestimates her support. The researcher asks 20 people and three say that they do. So it's not looking likely that it's going to be that 40%. Let's just analyze our definitions here. Uh, write down a suitable test statistic. Well, this is the observed amount of people who support the candidate. Two alternative, two, two suitable hypotheses. Well, the null hypothesis is the default state of 40% of people supporting her. And the alternative hypothesis Given that she's overestimating, the probability might be less than 0.4, so that's what our alternative hypothesis is. 
Part C is explain the condition under which the null hypothesis will be rejected. Now this brings in the 5% significance level. So the null hypothesis will be rejected if the probability of three or fewer people saying that they support the candidate is less than 5%. Okay, so there, if we, if we only sample 20 people, then there is going to be some variation in, um, in the number of people who say yes, they support this candidate, but is three too low? So what we're going to see is whether three or fewer people support the candidate and whether that has a less than 5% chance of happening. If it has a less than 5% chance of happening, then it's very unlikely to happen. So therefore, the probability is probably going to be less than 0.4. If the probability is, say, 10%, then, then it may just be an a, a unlucky um, sample of 20 people that she had here. But we say that 5% generally is the level at which we're going to reject our null hypothesis and we're going to accept the alternative hypothesis. All right, then, so we'll see it more in action mathematically in the next video. But here is your chance to just have a go at uh, a basic question here. Defin defining the three key points of a hypothesis test. All right then, so hopefully that was an easy one for you then. So question three here, Dimitri wants to see whether a dice is biased towards the value of a six. He throws the dice 60 times and counts the number of sixes he gets. Describe the test statistic. So this is the observed amount of sixes out of 60. The null hypothesis here is going to be the default state, so h0 is going to be p equals 0. Point, no, not 0. Point, 1 sixth. And the alternative hypothesis here is going to be, so if he thinks that the dice is biased towards the value of 1 sixth, then we're going to assume here that he's looking for the dice to have a probability of greater than 1 sixth. All right then, so thanks very much for watching this video. Carry on to the next one and we'll see hypothesis testing in action.